Hello everybody, thanks for uh, jumping on here and uh, checking out this video. I just wanted to kind of, you know, release some of the, you know, false, you know, stigmas or whatever around cryptocurrency or just help maybe people that don't quite have a full understanding of what it is and, you know, how it works and kind of what it looks like, you know, in the future going forward um, and things that might would keep people from, you know, investing in it now. Um, you know, considering now is the kind of the infancy stages um, as we move into, you know, kind of this technological revolution, so to speak. Um, so I just wanted to kind of go over a few things, help people really understand what it is, you know, and the differences of, you know, maybe versus your traditional investment methods like stocks and, um, you know, bonds or, you know, just kind of how specifically stocks, um, you know, we, typically buy stocks and hope the value of the company goes up and the value of your uh, stocks go up and you make a lot of money. Um, you know, as crypto is a lot like that right now, um, and particularly, you know, for most people, that's kind of the way we've thought of investing in crypto is that we're going to buy a bunch of it and hope the value goes up and sell it and make a nice profit. And while they're are certainly a lot of people that have done that um, and continue to do that you know more of your trading um, you know avenue of going about it um, I just wanted people to understand that there's far more to it than that and really understand where you know the true value uh, comes into play uh, for crypto um, certainly now but more importantly in the future as um, you know, adoption and participation in the networks continue to grow and how you can truly um, create generational wealth, um, you know, by investing now into some of these networks and just really understanding how they work. So, you know, I just, I, I guess the main thing was, you know, to really help people to kind of imagine cryptocurrencies, you know, not just as a or as digital money or, you know, assets to trade like stocks, but more as tokens of power within this vast digital ecosystem. So each cryptocurrency, you know, is, is kind of like a key that is unlocking different functionalities and services within its own digital you know, world, so to speak. So, you know, while it's true that, you know, most people buy and sell cryptocurrency for profit, you know, like, like I said, stocks and uh, their real value, it really goes beyond, far beyond just, you know, simply trading them. Um, you know, the way to really think of cryptocurrencies is as utility tokens. So they're not just investments, you know, they serve a specific purpose within that digital ecosystem. So, um, just like a token, you know, at an arcade, you know, that lets you play a game. For example, you know, many cryptocurrencies give you access to specific services or features in their network. Um, so, you know, using a particular crypto might, you know, allow you to participate in decentralized finance or, you know, what they call DeFi services. You know, you can also vote on decisions that affect that network or access exclusive digital content. Um, you know, there's there's many different roles that the crypto plays within that network. It, it's used for a specific purpose. Um, and, you know, for other networks, you know, especially things like Ethereum. Um, well, actually, for pretty much all networks, the, the native token to that network, like Ethereum to the Ethereum network, is used for fuel. You know, they call it gas. Um, it's used to um, send uh, transactions across the network. Um, so while these, you know, cryptocurrencies act as fuel for their respective blockchain networks, you know, they're also used to compensate those who maintain the network and can be required to execute certain operations, you know, like making transactions or running applications. So, um, you know, I just wanted to really help you guys kind of clear some of this stuff up and I wanted to give maybe, you know, kind of a real world analogy, I guess. So, you know, I would think of them as kind of like airline miles or store loyalty points. 
but instead of just getting you know free flights or discounts these crypto points can enable you yourself to lend you know or borrow stream content or even create and sell digital art if you know if you're into that kind of stuff um so you know another analogy could be something like um you know is electricity in a city just as you know electricity powers different appliances you know cryptocurrencies power various activities and services in their own uh digital realm um and i do have this you know calculator this is what you've been staring at here this flare network so i do want to get into flare networks and the rewards that you can earn from flare um, and we'll get into that here in a minute um, but i just really wanted to drive home how you know crypto actually works and what it's for for those of you again that don't have a full understanding um, so again it's the future of crypto is driven by utility i mean the future value of you know the best cryptocurrencies will likely be driven by just how useful they are i mean what what can you actually do with them rather than just trading them so you know, as these digital ecosystems you know grow and continue to evolve and offer more services the utility of their cryptocurrencies um, or their, you know, their native tokens to their network, you know, the that utility can increase, which is also going to give them more value. So as more and more people understand, there's more and more decentralized applications that are built on top of these protocols. That's what you need to look at these um, blockchains as their their protocols, just like how you, you know, send a text message or send an email. So like Google, for example, you know, email is sent on the SMTP protocol. So we don't know how the email gets sent. We just know that we type it out, hit the send button, and it reaches its destination. So that all that's happening in the background for it to reach its destination is called a protocol. So that's what these blockchains essentially are. They're layer one and layer two protocols. So that allow for certain things to be done. So then we get companies that come in and build their applications, their apps, you know, like how on our iPhones and Androids, we have apps on there. They build their apps and their softwares on top of these protocols that enable them to be able to do certain things based on, you know, that particular uh, protocols um, use cases. So the more people and the more companies and institutions that come in and build their applications and and utilize these different networks or the, I'm sorry these different blockchains or networks, um, the more these tokens are going to be used, the more they're going to be utilized. Meaning because they have to be used for people to be able to uh, interact with the system. So when they're being used and when they're being bought up you know that's increasing the value of these tokens because they have to be used to operate the system all right so it's again it's not like a stock um, so that's what we have to get out of our heads for those that don't quite understand that so um let's see so i guess another thing that i wanted to discuss you know was just that you know the different cryptos and their uses you know just like stocks like i've said you know they represent shares in different companies different cryptocurrencies represent different digital ecosystems you know and utilities and you know so so therefore some might be good for global payments um, others you know are good for you know securing contracts and others for you know decentralized finance some are used you know in gaming um, you know, there's all kinds of different use cases that um, are good for, like, like I said, like a finance company to come in and build their application on top of Flare Network that enables people to be able to um, to lend. You can lend your own tokens. You know, you can borrow. You can leverage. You can 
do all kinds of different things. And this is just a DeFi example, um, or a gaming company can come in and build their games on top of, you know, Flare Network or any other type of blockchain um, to utilize um, it in their gaming, uh, you know, world or whatever. Not even really too into gaming, but so you know, how does Flare Network fit into this and and you know in the calculator um that i have here so one thing about the the main thing about flare is flare is like the rolls royce um for data um and it's you know it's a it's a network and a blockchain that it, you know it extends the utility of existing cryptos Okay, so it's designed to enable the execution of smart contracts for cryptocurrencies that originally don't support smart contracts, you know, like XRP and Litecoin and Bitcoin and tons of them that they don't have smart contract functionality. So Flare allows different networks to interoperate. They call it interoperability. So you get a lot of these siloed networks. I'll use it for uh, like Bitcoin or Ethereum, for example. So you got this Ethereum ecosystem that all of these companies are, that have built their applications or softwares on top of the Ethereum blockchain, Ethereum protocol, they're kind of siloed. They're kind of caged into that one um into that one blockchain so they can't utilize the benefits of other um, networks because they these networks don't talk to each other do you remember back in the day when we had you know if you worked for a company they had like what you call intranets where now we have the internet where all of these different protocols can talk to each other where back in the day, you know, you had an intranet where you could only, you know, utilize it within your own company, right? So now we have internet where all of these different companies and, you know, different protocols can now talk to each other. Well, that's the same thing. This is what one thing that one thing that Flare enables, um, you know, all of these applications to do is to be able to talk to each other because it opens up the doors for these siloed um, blockchains to be able to all kind of connect together, so to speak. Um, so, you know, it's, you know, think of smart contracts, for example, as like self-executing contracts, you know, where the terms are directly written into code, you know, they automate processes and transactions in, you know, a secure and um, decentralized manner. So that's, that's kind of where it brings such a huge uh, utility to so many of these other networks that they don't have, you know, just on their own. So, you know, this, um, you know, like I said, this opens up just a huge possibility or possibilities for, you know, these other cryptos for, you know, DeFi and, and new forms of digital agreements. So again, that's that interoperability piece where Flare facilitates this interoperability um, between the different blockchain networks that allows them to, you know, interact seamlessly and integrate, you know, different services of assets across various crypto ecosystems. So um, it, it's, it's, they're really the Rolls Royce it's a major, major um, selling point and 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 use case that is going to change the game uh, in regards to crypto and adoption, and for companies to be able to, for for those companies that are on the fence, you know, about being able to wanting to take the leap into building out their applications on you know these crypto um, blockchains. Um, so I think it's really going to help with more of a mainstream adoption. So, um, so you know, you could, you know, you can think of Flare Network like a universal remote that can control kind of a, a variety of electronic devices, I guess. 
So, so similarly, Flare can interact with different crypto uh, currencies, you know, expanding their functionalities. It just gives them more functionalities that they couldn't do on their own. So when you're, you know, just adding an engine, you know, to a bike, you know, transforms it into a motorcycle, you know, boosting its capabilities. So that's what Flare does. It adds smart contract functionality to cryptos, um, you know, significantly enhancing their potential uses. So, um, so Flare, um, FLR is the native token uh, of the Flare network. You know, it's used as fuel for executing smart contracts, you know, similar to how gas powers a car. Um, so, you know, holding Flare essentially allows you uh, or users to, ex to participate in the network's governance, uh, contributing to decisions about the network's future. It's a completely permissionless and trustless ecosystem. There is no middleman. There is no third party um, that you have to worry about or anything. It's an extremely uh, decentralized manner where a lot of crypto, they talk about decentralization in crypto. There's a lot of companies, crypto companies, especially exchanges that are not decentralized. Flare is a truly decentralized, permissionless, and trustless, where trustless meaning there's no one to trust. The system operates automatically based on certain conditions. If this, then this. And it does it automatically. So as long as those conditions are met, every person that is involved in whatever that transaction is, um, is made whole. It's it's a very risk uh, free um, type of network, uh, much more so than any other network that we have seen or experienced in really our lifetimes. So, you know, with its ability to introduce this smart contract functionality to you know a broader range of cryptocurrencies, um, I think Flare is really really poised to enable innovative applications and use cases from you know decentralized finance to tokenization of real world assets like real estate and you know different stops where you know or stocks excuse me these things will be you know tokenized and moved on to these different networks this is literally the future so you know, as more applications are built on the Flare network, you know, the utility and the value of Flare, FLR, um, and is only going to grow, you know, as more cryptos are integrated with it. And there's, there's multiple ways to grow um, your Flare, the tokens, um, through different types of rewards um, and different, you know, staking. I'm sure many of you have heard of staking. Um, so let's get to the calculator here. Um, now that you have a better understanding of kind of what Flare is and what crypto is in general, and this is going to be the piece on kind of how you can earn rewards utilizing Flare. So basically this right here, this is Flare's current price. Um, it's a formula that pulls in every 15 minutes the current price. Um, I just put in, you know, an initial investment of $25,000 here. Um, I will make this um, available, this calculator, for those of you um, that want to. You just save a copy of it, and you can go in here and play with it yourself. Um, you can put in your own numbers and see. So as of right now, one of the ways of earning Flare, so until, uh, believe, until, until January of 2026, um, this got off here. Wait, until January of 2026, they will be distributing Flare drops. So they, they're giving a certain percentage of Flare based on how much Flare you have. Um, so for example, tomorrow on January 11th, um, 
they are, it's, it's about 6%. So whatever flare you have, and no, you cannot go buy a bunch of flare or sell your other crypto or whatever right before the airdrop. They do take three different snapshots throughout the month, and they determine that they use that to determine you know the percentage of how much you're going to get. So if you're going to get it, get it, and then just hold on to it for the month. And you can even add to it. You can buy more throughout the month. You can, you know, buy it all at once. Like for example, here, just say it's a twenty-five thousand dollar investment based on the current price. That would give you one million four hundred and thirty-six thousand one hundred eighty-seven flare tokens. Okay, so right here, that's the beginning balance. So based on that, if say we bought that earlier in the month, of course I know this is, you know, we'll be a little bit behind on this just because um, most of you are not going to see this right away so you can kind of play with it from you know where in this process you might would be versus um, right here since you're probably not going to be getting this first flare drop um, however we'll just it's really going to be pretty similar we'll just keep the example going so you would earn essentially for the first month about 80,000 additional flare um, then your FTSO delegation rewards. This is for the Flare Time Series Oracle. This is where you take your Flare, and this part might get a little bit over your head, um, but it's really not that difficult. You take your Flare and you wrap it. You turn it into, and you, and this is all done on an app, which is inside of a wallet. It's it's very simple. It's really not complicated. You wrap it. You turn it into wrapped Flare, which is now going to be WFLR. Um, and again, this is just semantics, so don't let this part scare you. Um, it's really not that hard. But anyways, you're going to, and then you're going to delegate the, these, your flares. You're going to delegate this total, that 1,516,000, or, you know, this, and these are all kind of estimates. I mean, this is a pretty good estimate as far as what you would have. Um, and then they're going, and then you're going to earn rewards. This is an additional way of earning rewards. 934 ish uh, rewards that you would earn every and you're going to be earning this th every three and a half days okay so if this were the case and you wanted to say I wanted to take out you leave your principal balance and you want to take out hang on one second and you wanted to, you know, sorry about that. Uh, you wanted to take out the the rewards that you earn and just out, you wanted to cash those out. Well, that monthly value based on the current price right now would be about 1400 bucks ish um, You know, that's a monthly APY, and I should not say APY because that's annual, but that it's a monthly percentage yield of 5.65%. For one month, guys. I mean, I mean, where else can you earn anything like that? I mean, you know, if you go down through here and then we repeat the process. And the thing to do, the thing to really think about here is we really want to compound. You know, during these first couple of years is, you know, really about accumulation. Um, I wouldn't be worried about. Now I'm just saying you could do this. You could take this out every single month, and then um, obviously, if the value goes up, you know, like I've got speculative monthly value over here. So if the value goes up by a penny each month over the first year, and of course, this is just speculation, this is just kind of seeing what it might would look like. You know, I mean, these are these are what you could earn. You know, every single month. I mean, this would be the value of what you're earning every single month. So, you know, ending, you know, but the thing to do is to really compound, is really take these, roll them over into the next month, use these to earn even more because you're, you're gaining, you're not getting, you know, 6% or so every single month. You have to realize that as, you know, as more and more people come onto the network, because there's only so many flare that they have earmarked for these flare drops and for delegation rewards, 
there's there's only so many so while there's less participation now there's more to go around for everyone but as more and more participation comes onto the network you know that's going to get spread out to more people therefore each person is going to receive you know less and less as time goes on so now is really the time to be participating in the network because you're only going to be able to earn more rewards um, early on. So take these, um, you know, take the rewards that you get and roll it over into the next month and just have a compounding effect. And as you can see, you know, this, these monthly rewards, I mean, look what you're earning. I mean, close to 80% on the year. And this is just at, and this is just only at, if, even if the price stated, you know, literally less than two cents per, you know, all year long. So, you know, I mean, I think it's a, it's an absolute no brainer understanding. If you really understand and know this network and what it's going to mean to, you know, the future of decentralized finance. And there's so many other ways to earn. I mean, there's ways that you can earn from, so I read that, had to pause uh, the video, but anyway, you see where I'm going with this. So this is after one year, um, and then, you know, so the, the, the flare drop distribution rewards are going to be going on until January of 26. So there's two years here to really be able to accumulate um, quite a bit of flare. So... As you can see here in this first year, you know, off of a $25,000 initial investment, I mean, you've earned over a million flare tokens just just off of the distribution, just off because it's going off a percentage off of your balance. So when you take your distribution rewards and your delegation rewards and you roll them into uh, your new monthly balance, you know, that's just compounding effect now you're gonna you know you're getting you're getting more per month now as you can see these start to go down the only reason they're going down is because the percentage is built in to decrease over time as you know it's estimated as participation on the network you know becomes more of a factor um, this is what it looks like Let's see <clears throat> so the monthly distribution awards Starting off at six, looks like it goes up a little bit next one. And again, this is estimated off of um, Flare Space, which I'll show you that in a minute. Flare dot space, um, and these are the rewards monthly. As you can see, five point three three percent, five point. So it starts to decrease as time goes down. Again, this is anticipation uh, or estimating more participation in the network therefore it's more flair to have to spread out to more people so therefore you get less of the pie um, so to speak and this goes on here for by the end of 20 the last drop estimating at about 2.1 percent so but again the main thing here is not so much worried about that it's about accumulating as much as possible um, because and, and I don't like to give price predictions because I don't know you know ultimately what the price in you know in a year two years five years ten years will be of you know any cryptocurrency uh, flare or you know any crypto we can speculate all we want based on the value that we see the network brings to this to the space in general um, and but you know we're in unprecedented waters I mean what we're witnessing has never been done before that we've ever seen you know in the crypto space in the technology and the the way in which our world works and in utilizes money and assets I mean it this is completely different We've never seen this before, so it's very difficult to predict exactly, you know, what these prices would be. However, I like to have a little fun and, you know, speculate. So, 
you know, this is the potential future value based on if we were to get to this point at the end of 20, or I'm sorry, in January 2026 and have um, this total here, which would be 3,668 flare. That's the point we got to off of a $25,000 investment. Um, and then, you know, say the price was at 25 cents. Well, your $25,000 investment is now worth 917,000. Okay. And 25 cents, um, yeah, is, is absolutely nothing. I mean, if we're talking serious value as to what this potential network could be, um, and specifically knowing that the Flare token itself is designed to be a high price because it is the collateral that bootstraps the entire network of the system. So for how the system works is um, creates Flare as having to be the collateral for the system, which means tons of it is going to be locked up as collateral, meaning there's not going to be that much available for all of the transactions and things that's going on. So the less that's available for the network activity is means the higher the price is going to have to be. So, you know, I could see this potentially being, you know, tens if not hundreds of dollars of value. Um, you know, again, I don't really like to just, you know, give a price speculation, specific price, but I'm just saying what I could potentially see. Um, but let's just say, we just put this at, oops, $5. I mean, if the price goes to $5, you can see here the yield on that is seven over 73,000%. Your value, your $25,000 investment is now worth $18 million. And again, that's just $5. Um, you know, let's do fifty dollars. It's now worth one hundred and eighty three million. So you can see while I certainly don't expect this to happen over the next couple of years, but you can see why you know the next couple of years are extremely important to focus on accumulation, getting as much as possible. Um, that's where my focus is. Um, in regards to crypto and investing, um, you know, in staking. And, th and again, this is just a couple of ways to earn rewards. There's other ways that you can do it as uh, other ways of earning rewards. And there's more that are coming down the pipeline when it comes to this year, when it comes to like F assets, which is the part that I was talking about earlier with um, this providing other networks with the smart contract functionality, such as XRP and Bitcoin. So when that part is completely done and ready to go, that's tons, billions and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars, if not a trillion dollars of potential value that can now come onto Flare Network, onto the network, and people can start earning rewards um, for their Bitcoin or their XRP, like they can't do that right now. But Flare, you'll still soon be able to do that. So um, it's gonna bring massive value onto the network, um, which in turn will hopefully be pushing the price uh, up. And, you know, what this speculative price is, you know, at some point in the future, you know, I have no idea, but it's fun to play around with. And when you really understand the value that this network is bring is going to bring to crypto in general, um, it's fun to play around with because you can see how, um, you know, gaudy, so to speak, big these numbers can be. And again, this is off just a twenty-five thousand dollar investment. I mean, think if you put somebody put a hundred thousand in. I mean, these numbers just get stupid. Um, you know, off of, you know, $50, it's a $733 million now of value um, because off a $100,000 investment after two years, they were able to accumulate, um, 
you know, close to 15 million flare, you know, off of an initial balance of 5,744,000. So, you know, these numbers get kind of crazy. And what I was going to show you is this distribution simulator for flare.space. Um, so they have, let's see, what is this? So based off of this um, amount of flare, 5,768, which is similar to what we have on our calculator, their numbers are even bigger than what I have. I'm not exactly sure how they're getting all of their numbers, um, but after two years, if you can see me hovering over here, right here at the last distribution, they're showing the incremental distribution at 11 million. 215,000, that's just the flare drops that you get every month with one and a half, near almost one and a half million in delegation rewards where, you know, I'm showing, um, you know, after the two years, wait, sorry, what was theirs? Uh, look, I meant to look at the one year here, 12, potential amount. 11,223,000, you know, where I'm just showing at 10 million. So my numbers are a little bit lower than what they have. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how they're calculating um, exactly all of theirs, um, but my numbers are pretty good and they're certainly in the ballpark and probably a little bit more on the safe side. So these are safe numbers, okay? Um, again, and you can look at the, you can play around with the um, spec price. I put this current price increasing one cent each month. Um, so, you know, if you were to just imagine this would, was what the value would be based on um, if this is what your total balance was and the price shot up to point, uh, two, seven cents. The value that you earn for that month is close to nine thousand dollars you know so as you can imagine as you can you know figure out pretty quickly that's a significant reward and far more than what you would be earning in a bank savings account or even a high yield savings account you know you're earning what four percent a year on a high yield savings account uh, i mean you know Putting it in a bank just doesn't make sense. It's not safe. You're trusting a third party. And with all the things with inflation and all the banking issues and crap going on around the world, I mean, they can very well, they can take your money. If you really understand banking and what's going on, um, they can literally take it. And they have. And they will. Um, so this is a completely trustless, permissionless, um, and much less risky, in my opinion, uh, if you understand how it works, um, way of kind of parking your money and and just an earning yield, earning lots more than you would ever earn anywhere else, uh, for the most part, in my opinion. But anyways, uh, this video is kind of long here, so I appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you have any questions uh, about how the spreadsheet works um, or anything like that, just let me know. Uh, remember, you will have to make a copy because it will be in view mode only. So you have to save a, yourself a copy to your own Google Drive um, to be able to actually play with it. So thanks, and let me know if you have any questions.